nice to see you. Last session of the day, so we're going to make sure you all get go to sleep and a nice little rest. And we're, going to we're going to talk about turning your checklists into pest tests. My name's Rob. Um, you can find me on Twitter on SQL DBA with a beard. That won't work. Okay. The reason that won't work is Twitter has a 15 character limit to its handles. So when I tried to change my handle to SQL DBA with a beard, I suddenly became SQL DBA with a bear. So I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I nearly kept it. and I, No, we'll, we'll go with a beard. Um, it could have been DBA with a beard, but that would imply that I know more stuff about Oracle, Postgres, Ingress, etc. than I don't. So, checklists. Everybody has checklists. You guys all work in IT. You're all admins of some sort or type. You're all making use of checklists all the time. You might be checklists that you have in your head. What do I need to do in the morning? Wake up, drink coffee, and then the rest of the stuff. Yep. They might be checklists that you have for when you're on call at three o'clock in the morning when the phone rings and you'll go oh, I'll log on and VPN into there and all that and then I've got to check X is this and that is running or this has gone wrong or what's in that error log or what have we got there. There might be pests that might be checklists that you have which you for when you're in a change management it all sort of process. I know we all love DevOps and we all want to be going forward but a lot of places where I go, what we have is agile for, yeah, water scrum, yeah, we'll develop, 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 oh no, now we must stop and go through all of this process before we are now allowed to release. And a lot of that process involves checklists. Before we make this change to this system, we need to make sure we have a valid SQL database backup. If any of you are dealing with SQL Server and are not doing that before you make a change, then come and see me afterwards. I'll make you write it out a thousand times. There, when you have new hardware, new VMs, new services, new systems, you have checklists that you run through to make sure everything's all right. Even if you're automating your build of your things, you still need to be going back and ticking off that list of whatever it is that's going on. If you're a senior DBA, you give your junior DBA checklists of things that he needs to do or she needs to do. It's very important that first thing in the morning you check the backups because having the backups for your SQL database is the most important thing for a SQL DBA. If you don't have them, it's probably a resume writing event. And for all of these things and a thousand dozen more, you need to have test tests. I'd like you to ask your presenters when their demo fails, did they run a test to test before, their demo, before they started their presentation? Every time that you go to somewhere and you do a presentation in front of your team or in front of a client, if you've got a little test to test running in the background and you know, what's, you know that everything's as it should be and you're not gonna be left with a red face standing up on the stage in front of a load of people. Here's the thing, one of the reasons I was sat there quite so intense is that my test test for my presentation failed. Because one of my servers has decided that it doesn't want to have the right time. And I haven't fixed it. But because I knew that, it wasn't a surprise to me when I can't start doing this talk. All of those checklists, it's a process. Who works in the sort of the government public sector sort of environment? Yeah, you've got checklists. You've got process. Yeah, loads of them. Whilst you're sitting here watching me, write down the things that you think of. Because I promise you from experience, that you will not remember everything that has been 
said to you over the next deal today and over the next other couple of days, I actually remembered something that when I was sat here first thing this morning that I should have been doing since this time last year because <laughs> I didn't write it down. Write it down. So PESTA provides a framework for running unit tests to execute and validate PowerShell commands from within PowerShell. There is a PESTA 101 earlier in the day. There's some other stuff about using PESTA to validate your code, test driven development, all that good stuff. But PESTA is just PowerShell. So we can use it to do everything that you guys know how to do in PowerShell. If it returns something, you can check it. That's what PESTA looks like. Apologies, that's what PESTA used to look like. I haven't updated my GIF. The new PESTA isn't quite as colourful. We have a described. PESTA has one of my favourite error messages. If you do not put the curly brace on the same line as a describe, it throws an error that says, have you put the curly brace on the next line? It's awesome. Then we have a context, a scope for the amount of tests that we're going to run for our thing. Again, we need the curly bracing on the same line. And then we have it. It is our test. And it expects that the value of the thing should be exactly the thing. And for that For that should be exactly, we're going case sensitive. For the should be, we're not case sensitive. And as you can see, another thing I love about Pesta, a lovely little arrow goes, hang on a minute, here, this is the bit I was expecting. This is where your difference is. Expect. Yeah, we've done that. <laughs> Please accept my apologies. As you may have noticed, I'm not a person that likes lots of bullet lists and lots of presentation to bore you to death with PowerPoint. However, here are the should operators. Here are what they do. Don't read them all now. Concentrate on this side. Most of you are going to be able to work out precisely what they are supposed to do. So, how many people know Top Gear? Old Top Gear, but recent Top Gear. Top Gear. Yeah. This will make sense to you. Because the answer to what can you validate is everything in the world. Okay. I'm exaggerating. There's a support as well. Um, not everything in the world. But this is simply the properties from a SQL Server management object, an agent of the SQL Server, the databases array, and the configuration array. So there are loads of stuff, conventions and defaults and properties of all types, just in those small bits. So you're going to be able to check anything that you know how to do in PowerShell. Add enough. Let's have some code. So, here we go to Visual Studio. I was going to demo in Visual Studio Code, but it, it's um, been a bit of a pain. So, we're not going. Let's have a look at the PEST test for my presentation. We're going to describe. We're going to describe testing my nook. Here's my nook, and we're going to check that all of these servers are running. Because if they're not running, my demo is going to not going to work. Now I'm going to run down here and grab the mouse. <laughs> I 
I should have, yeah, that's, there you go. You, everything that you can test at PowerShell, which does not include the location of your mouse. Oh, well, we'll go, we'll go with that. I'm also going to check my domain. Obviously, I'm going to make sure that each of those machines in uh, each of my machines that have a name like SQL in my uh, Nook are responding to a ping. I'm going to check my SQL services on all of my machines. All of this is code that you know how to write. Because we're inside a context scope, we'll put our VM object, and actually that includes the name. So all of the virtual machines that have a name like SQL in a state that's running, we put their name into a variable. And then for each of those, we can run through. There's another way of doing this, which we'll talk about in a minute. But we're going to make sure that all of our services are up and running, that the values of them are correct, and the ones on the local machine. And for my presentation, I want to make sure I've got one PowerShell ISE process open. I should have code inside it open. That's going to fail because I've shut it. I should have PowerPoint open. I should have the one PowerPoint open. I should have the correct PowerShell presentation open. Times I have sat up here, ready to do a presentation on Pesta, and realized I've got the PowerPoint for you know, SQL provider. But we make sure that we're in the right space. Mail should be closed. Tweeting should be closed. Slack should be closed. My prompt should be at presentation. If I'm doing this at a place where I'm working on a work laptop, my prompt might actually give away some useful information for people. Maybe usernames, maybe paths or things. So I make sure that my prompt's at presentation. I only need to write this once, and then I can just carry on adding to it. Correct. Absolutely. I like things to be right. So, one of the things I said earlier was anything that PowerShell can check. And bright people out there would have gone, well, if you, if you, why are you checking tweeting and Slack and all this thing? Why don't you just check that Quiet Hours is turned on? Because I can't do it with PowerShell. Apparently, you can check for a registry engine, which we can do in PowerShell, which we could run a pest test against, doesn't work. If I had left in quiet hours turned off, and then I know that certain young Danish men would be tweeting me right now and seeing if I noticed that a little pop-up came up saying, you know, haha, have you seen the beard? No, well, you try, it's fine. So, this is PESTA uh, version 4. And as we can see, everything is good apart from my code inside. So I could run that, and then we could um, make sure my presentation is going to work perfectly for all you guys who come and take the time to come here and see this. We have a way, it's going to look very confusing, we create a function function called test SQL default. And in that function, we're going to have a variety of parameters. So we're going to take a, an array of SQL servers. We're going to look, put a SQL admin account in, a backup directory, a data directory, etc., etc., maximum value. All of these things are important for SQL people. Think of the things that are important for your environment and for your work and what you do. We write this, and as you can see, it keeps going and going and going and going and going. And what we end up with is some PowerShell that says, check if this server name, if I can connect to the server name. Because if I can't connect to the server name, I don't really want you to run all of those tests, or the tests that we'll see in a minute, and not be able to make things work. And then we have a describe block for our server. And what I do is create a new 
return object and add to it all of the values from that SQL Server that we go and gather once at the beginning. And once we've run those, all of those, using the default values that we're going to set in the parameters, we're going to be able to test our SQL Server. All of this code is on GitHub server. To pass parameters into our pester test, what we do is create ourselves um, a hash table. And then we can add in all of these, uh, all of the values for these parameters that we're going to do a test. And then we can just call our function with our palms, and away we go. And all of a sudden, we're testing a whole number of SQL servers. And we're making sure that they have a whole load of things that are really important to me as a SQL DBA in the context that I expect them to be, but also using a script that is written in such a way that if I go to a different shop where they have different default values, maybe they don't want to do their full backup on a Sunday night. Maybe they want to do them on a Friday night. Maybe they don't do their diff backups at midnight. Maybe their diff backups happen at 3 o'clock in the morning. Once we've got ourselves a function that accepts the parameters and a way of passing them in, we could just walk in, change the parameters, bang, go. Ah, look, the backup's on today. Right, we can do something about it. A lot of you guys out there aren't SQL people. But I show you all of this just so you can see quite how quickly we could test a vast majority of properties that are important to me as a SQL DBA. Because I am very, very pedantic about how my SQL server needs to be. Yep. I do have OCD. I do expect things to be set up in, in a particular way. Another thing you can do with your pesters is, is tag your tests. So maybe when I first walk into a client, I want to run the whole suite of tests to make sure everything's right. But then maybe we start working just on making sure we've got enough backup. I don't really want to run all of those tests. I just want to, you know, I don't want to impact the rest of the state. I just want to check these backups. So we can use the tags and we'll see. Uh oh. I'm in danger. I'm going to have to have a strong word with myself. Yep. Yep. SQL 2016 N3 doesn't have access to backup yet. Oh, of course it doesn't. There would be no point in me backing up my SQL servers to something that I bring with me because there is a possibility that I could lose all of this and not have it at all. So if my backups are with my data center, then I'm in a pretty stupid place. Yeah? So this is a test that I run at home to make sure everything's as I expect it to do. We could look at the we could look at the collation for our SQL servers. Now, honestly, that ran so quick you didn't even see it. What that has done is gone through every single database on those three servers and ensured that the collation of the database matches the collation of the server. There's a really important SQL reason why you should do that. That's not the point for you guys. You don't care about the SQL. Think about the process. Take from this stuff that you can use in your own environment. SQL 2016 Node 3 databases do not have the right collation. I don't know how many databases are on there, but I know that in 1.08 seconds, I could check every single one of them on three servers. So we showed that PESTA is just PowerShell. So we can write ourselves some loops. And of course, 
we wrote some for each loops, which you've now learned are the bad things to do and you shouldn't do it because it's not very performant. Because they're only holding arrays, I think I'm quite bad at carry with these. But in Pesto, we have this thing called test case. So what this code is doing here is the same thing, grabbing all of the SQL servers from my virtual machine, getting the names of them, where their name matches uh, SQL 2016 and that they're running, and creating ourselves, uh, create ourselves a test cases variable by adding each of them to. Again, completely the wrong way of doing it. If only I'd known that's why I was going to do that demo. I could have made more fun of this. But now we access our test cases by adding the parameter test cases to our git block and putting in this is how we can access, we, this is how we can show in the title of our test that we're working on a particular name in this case. This has to match that in your test case. The property of your test case name has to match. And then we add a param and then we just, what we're doing here is running some DBA tools commands. This DBA tool command is testing the SQL path. Is my SQL, if my SQL server is running under a domain account that has access to a backup share. A very good friend of mine who is a security person would say that I do not want any of you people to have access to this backup share. Because I don't want you to be able to copy this backup share onto something and take it away with all of the data for our company and leak it in some form or fashion. But as a SQL DBA, I appreciate that. I understand the security need. I need to know that my SQL server can access the share. That's the bit that's important. And that's what this command does. So we're expecting that to test SQL path for each of those servers should be true. We know that it's not going to work for all of them. But this gives you a better idea of how many database, how many databases we checked on all of those servers. But this is the same command as we've just run. It's just that we've expanded to show you each of the databases to see which ones haven't got, haven't had a successful check and group, haven't got the right collection. That was pretty quick. So, let's Here's another different way of creating a parameterized version of your pest tests. What we have here is some JSON. Nothing complicated. But now we're saying that for our backup share, we want to check Z. Let's go different. Let's, let's talk about that. Collation for databases. We're only going to check that one server. Just node three. We're going to check it on the Hyper V beard node. Um, skip is enabled to true, set to true. So Pesta has a parameter called skip that you can set, which basically says when you run these tests, don't do that one. So we've got tags, we can say when you run this test, do these ones. And now we've got a skip. When you do these tests, don't do these ones. The skip is going to win. Because I've got a collation database test, I've got a collation database detail test, I've got a collation server level test. I don't want, there's no point in running all three of them. I'm only going to need to use one or the other. But now all I need to do is keep that test 
in my test folder and alter my JSON config, which I can now save out for different clients, for different environments, for different versions, for different whatever it is that I want to do. I'll just keep reusing that code again and again and again, making our tests nice and simple and easy to use. Now all we need to do is invoke Pesta. <laughs> if I'd run that, that would fail. Now all we need to do is set a config value that includes all of that data, and then we can invoke Pesta. And as you can see, what we need to do is join it on the new line to pipe it into our convert from JSON. The yellow one went through, that was a skipped one. We tested some databases, ride the lightning, call of duty, clapped under ice. When was the last good PVCC? We're checking our network latency. Are we going to check our SPNs? Not on that. That's the server that um, hasn't got the right time. So that's the one that's going to fail. According to my watch, I'm 26 minutes into a dynamic workout. <laughs> So in 32 seconds, I've run 198 tests, and I've passed 193 of them, and I've failed five of them, and four of them we skipped. Of course, that's all very well and good. That's all very well and good for you guys who are PowerShell people, because you can now make sure that all of your checklists are passed. You can make sure that before you do your presentations, everything is as you expect it. You can make sure that your home lab is set up in the way that you want it to be. You can test anything that you want to. You can automate the monkeys out of this thing. But if you go and give that, to your change management person in your, they're going to go, what? Yeah? So, there's this thing called Report Viewer. It's a little XE that you can download. And in my test follow instance, which I have All this is going to do is go and check my folder to see if I have that XE, and if not, it's going to go and grab it and download it. All of my code is on GitHub. You can just grab that itself. And it's going to run through a whole list of tests. And these tests are the tests that I wrote when I had to do, when I had to check on over 180 SQL instances, whether they each had a full backup job and that it was scheduled, and that it was enabled, and that it was writing to the right place, and that it was running at the right time, and then the same for a diff job, and the same for log jobs, and the same for make sure my agent was running, and then I had to go and check each folder, and make sure that there was a folder created for every SQL instance, and inside that folder there was a folder for every database, apart from the databases that were in an availability group, because they were going to be in they need to be in a folder for availability group. And inside each of those server or availability group folders, there needs to be a database folder. And inside the database folder, there needs to be a full folder, a diff folder, and a log folder, except for the databases that are in simple mode, because they don't need a log folder. Oh, and the databases that are in log shipping, because they don't need log. They don't need log folder either. And inside the full folder, there needed to be a file that was a .back file. And it needed to be created within the last, the newest one needed to be created within the last seven days. And inside the diff folder, there needed to be a .trn file, and that needed to be created within the last 24 hours. And in the log folder, there needed to be a .trn file, and that had to be created within the last 30 minutes. 150 databases, three or four thousand, sorry, 150 servers, three or four thousand databases 
I could have given that to my junior DBA. I said, junior DBA, your beard is awesome. How long will it take you to check all of those different things on 150 servers? Forever. Who would trust my amazingly bearded friend to get everything 100% right when he checked 150 servers, 300,000, 3,000 databases, and all of those different things? Anybody? Because it's obsolete. Human. Humans make mistakes. We don't mean to make mistakes, but we make mistakes. It took me two hours to write the script. It took the script 15 minutes to run. It ran about 15,000 tests. And it meant that what I was able to do was present the, present the boss with a pretty picture. Because we all know management love pretty things. Yeah. They love graphs and donut charts and all of this stuff, and it looks fancy and great. And it gets better, because not only is it a pretty picture, but it's a pretty picture that you can interact with. And you can see failed. And something went wrong. So all this is is just our pester results delivered in a way that is available to management to understand. And the beauty of that was I got paid. Because for me to be paid, I had to prove that the solution that I put in did all of those things. So this is going to earn you money, as well as make sure your presentations work, as well as make sure your lab is set up correctly as well as all the other things that I hope are going through your brains right now, of things that I can do to make sure that I make use of PESTA, that they aren't just code testing. So, to summarize, because we only have 45 minutes to do this, everybody has got checklists. Manual testing, humans, and indeed junior SQL DBAs, less than even if we have wonderful beards, are error prone. So don't use humans to check things. Don't use humans to perform manual testing. Now here's an idea. I did this presentation, or a version of this presentation in Slovenia. And a very clever person took this. And he turned his on-call solution to make use of test tests. So what happened was at 3 o'clock in the morning, they'd get a phone call, yeah, major system is down, you must fix it. And they would log on, and they would have a coffee, get a coffee at least. Log on, VPN in, check the these event viewers, check these logs, check these SQL performance stats, check the thing that's gathering some information, pull it all together. Oh, I think it's, this thing is wrong. Right, I know how to fix this. Oh, no, I've forgotten. Where's the documentation? Uh, yeah, oh, that's right. We do that and then nail that and that. And then he'd go through and do his, do his checks. And everybody came through. When a new person came and joined, they had to be run through this procedure and talk about it. And then normally the first time they were on call, they'd forget something and they'd have to phone somebody else who was normally on call. They got a phone call at 2 o'clock in the morning going, well, I told you this on Friday. For goodness sake, have you not remembered? He took all of that. And this is what he did. Their monitoring system would identify that there was a problem. Let's say, thing is down. The monitoring system would create a ticket in their incident management system. 
As soon as the script saw that a ticket had been created in the instant management system for this particular application, it grab it, move it into its own, assign it to itself, move it into its own pot, it would run all of the pester tests that it would normally do, that they would normally do when they called. It would put all of the results from those pest tests back onto the instant management. If it was things that were fairly simple to fix, the stuff that they'd done again and again and again, it'd fix them. And then run the pest test again. Ah, we fixed. Close the incident. Mr. PowerShell, I completed all of this. And uh, these are the actions. These are what I've found. These are the actions I've taken. I've tested that everything's working. I've closed it the call, everything's gold. If it couldn't fix everything, it might go, ah, it's the database's fault. Well, sorry, it's never the database's fault. So, uh, it's the network's fault. There we go. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> it's never the network's fault. Okay. It's the storage's fault. Of course, storage admin is always the storage's fault. It would decide which one of those tests failed. It would assign it to the right queue and put the on-call thing. Have you worked this out? PowerShell is telling these people how to do their jobs. PowerShell is their manager, assigning them tasks. Do you want to be the people who are assigned tasks by PowerShell, or do you want to be the people who write the PowerShell? I know which one I'd rather be. The basic syntax, we've just done that other bit. The basic syntax, describe, context, it. Don't forget the curly braces, otherwise you get the beautiful message. In fact, you're probably all going to go and put the curly braces on some just to see the message, just to prove it. Um, the should command is the one you use. To create those HTML forms, we use an output format of NUnit XML. As you will undoubtedly know, you can make use of that and chuck it into anything that you want. Whether it's your instant management system to tell you what to do or your CI person. Mm. Questions? Silence. Hello. Uh, it is defined within the within the So what that invoke test is doing is going through this path and running anything that in dot test dot ps1. So So, when we ran our pester with our tags, we were making use of these tags. You can have more than one tag for any command. And then we're just checking our conflict value within every single thing. Maybe. But you're only running it within that, that folder. So if you went and run it again, yeah, absolutely. Any more questions, or do you want to go to the two? That's a little bit of a way. Yes, sir.
So the question is, wouldn't it be more sensible to move the tester tests inside of the monitoring system? Unfortunately, the person is not here to involve. Um, from the way that he described it, it wasn't something that was a capability within the monitoring system. It possibly could have been a capability within the, uh, well, it was, obviously, a capability within the instant management system. Yes, sir. Tester is a framework for unit testing in the parachute code. So, yeah, the answer to your question really is no. What you what you can do is go through the results of your tester test and then take action. So you can take you can grab the results just into a variable. You can output them into XML. You can even pass them in whatever way, and, and then take action. You can't. It, I, it wouldn't be sensible to do it within. In fact, I'm not even sure that you can actually access the result of the test after you run the test. I don't think you can. You, it's possible to actually do that. But I, I mean, I wouldn't recommend doing it anyway. Yes. Anybody got any more questions? Yes, sir. Got any more examples like this? <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, um, I haven't got any more examples that are as dynamic as that, um, because that is quite the most free thing. See, this is, this is the problem having a bit of um, What I'm going to do is plug a session by Andre Command. If you go and have a link, if you come and watch Andre Command's session on um, using Tesco, that came from the first time I ever did this. Um, he, he does some cool stuff. I'm not going to steal his thunder. I'm going to let him, let him talk about it. Um, to be honest, the biggest place where I've seen the people have come back and said, oh yes, I'm using that, is in presentations. It's the presenters, it's the people that are standing up here. Like, not the PowerShell ones particularly, but the SQL ones, because I've been at a lot of SQL conferences recently. And they're the ones that are making sure that their environment's in the right state, that their data's in the right state, that they haven't forgotten to roll back the transactions that they're supposed to be sharing. And those things they're finding really, really useful because it's reducing the amount of time they're spending before a presentation to make sure that everything's going to talk to each other. According to my watch, that should be all but empty, which it is. So if nobody else has any more questions, and if you do, you can come and grab me later on. Now I think it's time for Q&A, and then Zoom, and then Beer. Sound good?